Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Today we're here back with the kill count. Tonight, well, hope you got some holy water because we got from Dust Till Dawn, the 1996 Quentin Tarantino film about vampires. And, well, there is one line I remember this from was, Welcome to slavery. No thanks. Or right, you had a wife. I still remember that one liner. <laughs> Gotta love it. Anyway, so let's see how many people dodge through the vampires and how many vampires bite the dust in Dust Till Dawn. So be sure to like, subscribe for more. Hope you enjoy. Let's rock on. Welcome to the Kill Count, where we tally up the victims hey in all our favorite horror movies and hey, show you how, how they're, they're made. made. I'm James A. Janice, and today we're looking at From Dusk Till Go Dawn, on. released in 1996. 1996. Real quick, if you're the kind of person who likes to be surprised by movies, maybe go ahead and watch, watch this thing movies. right I'm now good. without any further info. Rarely does a movie shift this hard, and it'd be a delight to see it unspoiled. Mm -hmm. But even in this intro, I'm gonna have to talk about what happened, since, after all, they included it yep. in the marketing. Okay, still here? Great. Yep. From Dusk Till Dawn follows a pair of bank robbers who take a family Ooh. hostage in order to to escape to Mexico. Once there, the movie suddenly turns into a ballsy, bloody vampire flick with a whole lot of kills. <laughs> From Dusk Till Dawn is a big indie film made by big indie filmmakers, directed by Robert Rodriguez and written by and co-starring Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino After himself. meeting at a film festival where both their debut right. features screened, Tarantino and Rodriguez became close friends, bonding over an intense interest in film. They'd collaborate again on 2007's oh, Grindhouse, God, each directing one of the features of that double bill. Tarantino yep. was at peak power here, coming off a writing off Oscar win for Pulp Fiction. Nice. He's one of those filmmakers who's kind of a mini genre unto himself, like Wes Anderson or Tim Burton. There are recurring Oscar visuals discounts. and themes that make it recognizably Tarantino. Dusk is no different and has plenty of direct references to his first two films, from specific shots to specific hamburgers to specific there lines. Is a tasty burger. Let's get rambling. But Tarantino's only <laughs> one half of this equation. This is a Robert Rodriguez film, and no one should misattribute his work. We don't need another poltergeist on our nope. hands, know what I mean? Rodriguez was, without question, the director of this film, although Tarantino did make suggestions from time to time. Of course, I didn't want to do it, even if it worked, so that he couldn't later say, see, I directed the whole movie. <laughs> Rodriguez, who was only 26 at the start of filming, really? was very hands-on on set. Just like with his previous projects, he'd often take the camera and film shots himself, even Thanks, if Rodriguez. it meant rolling around on a skateboard dolly <laughs> on his back. He also seemed inseparable from his guitar during the shoot. Dude looks like a filmmaking bard or something. <laughs> The movie ends up being a mashup in terms of both filmmaker and genre that's largely enjoyable if you're a fan of Tarantino or Rodriguez. If you're not, it can be a little uh, much. I mean, Tarantino plays a weird dude with a foot fetish. What yeah. a surprise. It's also a sometimes oh. mean movie with nasty characters in the same territory as The Devil's Rejects. Hell, the bad guys even harass an innocent family at a motel. But between its yep. memorable performances and great creature effects, there is a lot to love here, and I do love it. Well, our heroes- Hello? Hmm? Guys? Yeah? I'm in. It's time. Hear All right, that. team. Today's sponsor, Manscaped, has mastered the art of superior grooming and hygiene tools for your family jewels. By my estimate, they have 20 million balls in the mix. So we're going to steal it. The balls? What? Balls. No, you can't steal balls. No, I met the Performance Package 5.0 Ultra. Here, I'll, I'll walk you through this again. Um, guys, I'm already... First, there's the Crop Soother and Crop Preserver. The Crop Soother pampers delicate areas with essential moisture and soothing relief. Then the Preserver Deodorant gets to work, keeping your funk at bay. Next, there's the Weed Whacker 2.0. It's designed to tackle nose and ear hairs with ease. Not to mention, it's waterproof, cordless, and nice. rechargeable. Got it. Not so fast. Word is he keeps his prized lawnmower 5.0 Ultra somewhere is set. Is this Soren stuff? Makes sense. I know. With a trimmer blade sporting wider round teeth to cut through hair with ease, and nice a foil music, blade though. for a sleek finish, this is the performance package's crown jewel. Not to mention, it has a bigger LED light than previous models, USB-C charging, and it's waterproof. Writer Tim, you got the intel on where it is? Yeah, yeah, it seems like our Mark, alias the Pantsless, keeps his lawnmower 5.0 guarded by a vicious beast. Vicious beast? I, I don't see any. Oh. Oh. Don't worry, I packed you supplies for just this situation. Dog treats? Crap, go! Mission accomplished. You don't need the Crack Dead Meat Team to secure your own Performance Package 5.0 <laughs> Ultra. You can care for your family jewels by going to manscaped.com and using promo code KILLCOUNT20. It'll get you 20% off, free shipping, and two free gifts. 
right. Will our heroes be able to live till dawn or will another one bite the dusk? Let's, Let's find, find out, out and get, get to the, the kills. kills. Let's begin. See what you got, Quentin. The movie begins on a dusty road. Texas Ranger Earl McGraw stops yeah! at a liquor store to get a stiff drink or 12. He's gonna need them. A nearby bank robbery has left eight people dead, and the perps will be passing through oh, here on the way to the Mexican border. Earl heads to the bathroom, and we see those bank robbers are already oh. here, complete with hostages. Easy to miss on a first time watch, but you can actually see them when McGraw walks in. Oh, there These are. are the Gecko brothers smooth criminal Seth and whiny little bro Richie. Richie. Seth Richie. tells Pete the clerk to be cool, PD Bunny, but Richie says he saw Pete signal the Ranger. It's a lie though this psychopathic creep just wants an excuse to kill he proves it when mcgraw returns abruptly executing the oh, by gunshot to the head god this twitching is so fucked up despite Ooh. dying here the character of earl mcgraw would be reprised by actor michael parks oh. in kill bill volume one and both segments of grindhouse a shootout huh. ensues cool. during which richie is shot in the hand and the two hostages escape before <laughs> Pete can crawl away richie shoots out the booze behind him and seth improvises to start a fire and flambe the poor bastard a dude in a burn suit jumps out and <laughs> fires off some last shot Shots, but Pete is killed when the brothers ah, pop Pete. a cap in his ass, and no cap, pop his corn. I believe oh. it's stunt coordinator Steve Davison doing this fire stunt. It's always Whee. fun to watch the people with fire extinguishers rush in, but it's not always fun to see the performers wear face masks of other actors. This shit's gonna haunt my dreams! <laughs> Outside, Seth scolds <laughs> Richie for making a mess of things. Low profile. What is damage? As it literally blows up behind burns, the bickering <laughs> brothers drive off into the sunset, stopping only momentarily for a freeze frame. Haha, <laughs> I got you there. When they get back into motion, hey, a it. weird x-ray effect shows the bank teller they're keeping in the trunk. What is she, in the car's thought bubble? The geckos What's get a room at the Tarantino trunk shop motel. Ugh, this poor lady Gloria. Already you're hoping she can find a way to survive these guys. And I mean, Seth, Probably yeah, sure, wrong. maybe, but fucking Richie? I don't like her chances. Seth hopes to use Gloria to get them across the border to a criminal safe Haven called the El Rey. He promises her oh. that she'll survive as long as she follows their rules. If you make a noise, Mr. 44 makes a noise. The brothers' path of destruction is covered on the news, which has its own kill count going on. They're boosting their numbers with off-screen victims, though. And we don't do that kind of sensationalizing here at Dead Meat. Oh, shit. Were these two killing people in Springwood's jurisdiction? Because that's the sax man himself, the late John Saxon, as an FBI hey. agent. We've seen him in Black Christmas and A Nightmare on Elm Street, of course. And though his cameo here is quick, I'm still glad we got a big old face full of sax. Seth has to go tend to some things and unwisely leaves their hostage with his paranoid little bro. Things immediately start to suck for her. Three, you wanna come over on the bed and watch TV with me? Oh, man, the news good, just thanks. told us that Richie is a sex offender. For the love of God, dude, leave this poor woman alone. No, she was well, no, she's either dead or Tarantino's gonna cast her in his next movie. Unfortunately, yeah, it's the former. Yeah. Seth returns from lunch and is disgusted to find that his brother has Richie. raped and murdered Gloria while he was away. Richie, what's wrong with you? So very much, dude. Richie says Gloria... Honestly, if that was my brother, I uh, think I would have shot him in the head, because, well, dudes lose cannon, and if I'm going to Mexico, well, well, you lost the chance, brother. Bye-bye. Like, blow his head off. Like, nah. -uh. Sheesh. That's just, that's just fucked up. Just fuck, fucked up. <laughs> anyway. I tried to run away, but Seth knows his brother isn't an honorable thief like he is. This is not me. I am a professional fucking thief. I don't kill people that I don't have to, and I don't fucking rape women. Seth Gecko has killed many innocent people. He's not a good man. He only seems like one compared to his horrendous brother. Also helps that he's played by George Clooney, one of the most handsome men to ever live. Dude's like Cody Rhodes. He can be charming and professional, even with an awful neck tattoo. This was one of Clooney's first major movie roles after having gained fame as a TV ER. actor on ER. Earlier film credits were low budget fare, like Return to Horror, Return to Horror High. High and Return of the Killer Tomatoes. Lots of returning. Really him? It's weird to see him on a set before he was an A-list megastar, where he's fucking up his lines and getting frustrated. Fuck. 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 Tarantino suggested Clooney for the role because he was a fan of ER and even went on to direct an episode. Rodriguez gave Clooney lots of close-ups and action scenes because he wanted to make him a movie star, which, to his credit, well, is pretty welcome. much exactly what happened. I wanted him to come and portray someone who sends people to the ER. With Gloria dead, the brothers need a new hostage or two to get them across the border. Lucky for them, a whole RV of them just Hello. pulled up in the motel. This is the Fuller family, Patriarch Jacob and his kids, Jacob. Scott and Kate. Though it looks like they're on their way to a Jurassic Park convention, they're actually on vacation slash soul searching trip for Jacob. He's an ex-pastor fleeing his flock since his wife's recent death ushered in a crisis of faith. Don't you believe in God anymore? I'm not saying that's true. 
Not enough to be a pastor. The room service at the motel comes courtesy of the Gecko Brothers, who take the family at gunpoint while slinging slurs and insults. Oh god, a teenage girl in a swimsuit should not be in the same room as Richie. Seth gives them the same deal he gave Gloria, get them to Mexico and they'll be home free. But of course, Richie's already having waking wet dreams about Kate. Richie, would you do me a favor and eat my pussy for me, please? No, you weirdo, she didn't actually stop say that. And stop staring at her feet! They head to Mexico, never to make it to their convention. Damn, Jacob was a shoo in for the John Hammond cosplay contest. During the drive, Jacob reveals his wife was killed in a car crash that left her slowly dying for six hours. Seth commiserates in his own special way. Those acts of God really stick it in and break it off, don't they? Yes, they do. Jacob is played by Harvey Keitel, who played Mr. White and Wolf in Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction. His daughter Kate is played by a 23-year-old Juliette Lewis, who was last seen on the kill count in Ma. Lewis is one of my favorite actors and nabbed an Oscar nom as an 18-year-old in Cape Fear, which gave her some street cred over the more novice Clooney. No matter nice. what George Clooney says, he was he was intimidated when he, he found out he's gonna work with me. The two of them seem to have a nice friendship nice. going on, and she looks like a fun person to have on set. I love this blooper of her doing that fantasy line. Would you do me a favor and eat my pussy for me, please? I'm hamming it up, let me just say. Uh... Do one more, I'm just sweating. That fucking coffee is crazy. Prior to this film, <laughs> Lewis had just yeah, appeared Natural in Natural Born, Born, Born Killers, Killers, another movie that started life as a Tarantino script. Woo! At the checkpoint, Jacob and Scott talk to Border Control while the brothers hide with Kate in the bathroom. A sibling spat nearly blows their cover, but Seth knocks out Richie and Kate covers for them by pretending to be on the pot. Okay, Officer Looky Lou, you can go now! The group gets right. into Mexico, making Seth very happy, again, in his own special way. We're fucking in Mexico, you little piece of fucking shit! He directs Jacob to the Rendezvous, a wild and dirty desert oasis Titty known twister. as the Titty Twister. This biker bar has invested heavily in neon lights and pyrotechnics, Ooh, as well as a hype man standing out front with the curious because, name of Cat Pussy. Why do I call that? We got white pussy, black pussy, Spanish pussy, yellow pussy. Oh, there okay, you go. That makes sense now. We got hot pussy, cold pussy, we got wet pussy, we got cold what? smelly pussy. What? Ew, I hope you got no. some gynos on hand too, because some of that I'm don't good. sound right. Chet is played by Cheech Marin, one half of the stoner hey, comedy duo Cheech oh. and Chong. Cheech also appeared as the border control guard earlier and Hello. would work with Rodriguez oh, again Spy in Spy Kids. 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 Hopefully, really? not playing Chet Pussy. Seth beats Please that don't. pussy up to gain entry, with Richie doubling back to kick him while he's down, the little creep. Seth prefers his cheap shots in the form of liquor, so he gathers the group around a bottle of whiskey and gets the kids started young. This bar is a hell of a set and a hell of a censor job for my yeah. head. My poor editors. The clientele includes tough customers like Frost, who'd rather stack up dominoes than shack up with dancers. Another biker, the aptly named Sex Machine, uses a phallic <laughs> firearm to scare off k and co-founder Greg Nicotero in a cameo. Fine. Sex Machine's an effects machine, since he's played by Gore Daddy Tom Savini, who would go on to Savini, act again cool. for Tarantino and Rodriguez. It's fun to see these two effects artists together, since Savini helped Nicotero break into the business back on Romero's Day of the Dead. Nice, Savini. Each other for many, many years. The revelry is interesting. Okay, you gotta admit, the fact that Savini acted in this, holy crap, there's a lot of people here. Kate Lewis, Quentin Tarantino, George Clooney, sheesh, I wonder who else is here. Still, it's pretty wild here. Anyway, next. Interrupted by bartender Razor Charlie, played by Danny Trejo, hey, a Trejo! Kill veteran and Rodriguez Woo! regular. Charlie's here to hype up the night's main event. The mistress of the macabre, the epitome of evil, Neo and worship at the feet of Santanico Pandemonium. Santanico and her serpentine sidekick perform a dance, giving us one of the sexiest appearances ever put to celluloid. Savini's gonna have to fabricate himself a new oh, jaw, <laughs> since this just fell to the floor. Even that other dancer is getting hot watching her, and this yeah, is her job. Know. The role of Santanico was originally written for Madonna, but was changed when Rodriguez wanted to incorporate more Latin lore. Tarantino suggested Selma Hayek, based on her dancing so, oh, in Rodriguez's oh, segment of the anthology film Four Rooms. She had already worked a bunch in Mexico, Mexico, but had just broken through in Hollywood Desperado. the year prior in Rodriguez's Desperado. She was actually terrified of snakes and had to do extensive reptile research and use hypnosis to get comfortable dancing with Ooh. one. So I had to learn how Wait, to go on trance so that I could overcome my biggest fear. Yeah, really? So I was on trance when I was doing that dance. 
it was worth it. Her performance here is legendary. Kim Kardashian dressed up as the character just last Halloween. Does it add anything to the film? I mean, yeah, she's kind of hypnotizing everyone. But in any case, I can tell you exactly why it was written. Yeah, I'm sure Richie's the Ew. guy this chick would pick out of the crowd to do this to. God damn it, Quentin. The footsy fun times are cut short when Chet comes back inside to confront the brothers, backed by Razor Charlie and another bouncer named Big Emilio. In the ensuing fight, Charlie widens the hole in Richie's Aye. hand, but then stands there long enough for Richie to take the knife out and stab him with it? What the fuck? The brothers manage to fight their way out, making sure to do it in Tarantino style. You know, I love early Tarantino as much as the next millennial film, bro, but, but I am glad yeah, his later it. films were a bit more varied. Now, you may have noticed there were no kill graphics during that fight. If you're wondering why, yeah, well, three, the gander two, of the green one. blood on that knife. Turns out this club is run by undead vampires, vampires, motherfuckers! Goddamn shit-sucking vampires! And the best thing about them is that their first victim is Richie, when Santanico chomps into his neck. Seth manages Ooh. to shoot her off, but not in time to save his brother. Ah, Richie! To death. Sick he fuck. won't be missed. The bar staff bars the exits, and all hell breaks loose as they turn the crowd into a biker buffet. Dinner is served. Ugh. Oh, 90 CG. How charming you are. A kill fest breaks out, and I can count seven off the bat as throats are slit, throats are bit, heads are thrown, and corpses are slapped like the bass. Bet God those damn. notes are wet. And I'm not sure how my <laughs> saxophone works, but it looks cool. Frost and Sex Machines <laughs> successfully fight off their assailants, while Jacob leaves his kids behind the bar and just kind of disappears for a while. What the fuck, dude? Check Check finishes up a bar snack he was working on, and then turns Watch his munchies it. towards the Fuller children. You know what everybody says about me, huh? I suck. Boo! Ooh, Annoyed by his bad joke, Kate feeds him her cross necklace, causing him to get all gross Oops, and scurvy. Oh Ever. shit, and spew out his eyeballs like a deadite? Fuck yeah! Frost manages to fight off four lady vampires and turns the table on them using Literally. a turntable. That's <laughs> efficient. Bartender Charlie goes all Chewbacca on another patron. Damn. He should have let the vampire win. Then he notices Sex Machine nabbing himself a six ball with a pool stick. Or rather, more like a pool steak. Wow, nice and tidy little pile he's got going <laughs> there. Charlie sizes up the competition, but Sex Machine Shindy whips him into shape, sinking a last oh, shot into Charlie's ah. chest. He even calls the shot as the vampire's body melts down. Two eyeballs, corner pockets. Hey. Santanico bats Ooh. Seth around, Whoa. pun intended, and gives him a dress down dressing down. Oh, You'll be my footstool. Oh, sorry, lady. You've got the wrong gecko. He shoots the chandelier yep, here we go. Over, which no, thanks. Already had a wife. Nico and Blech. turns her into a not so eternal. Wait, a metal chandelier counts as Santanico. Right? Jacob returns from wherever he was, just in time Ooh. to face uh -oh. off against Big Emilio, who's walking around <laughs> breaking necks like nobody business. At this Ooh. point, I'll also go ahead and add the nine dead and dying victims we see in the back here. Frost steps into the fight with a one-liner that wouldn't be as badass coming from a different actor. Yo, monkey man. Hey, monkey man. Anything you got to say to them? Say it to me. Say to me first. Fred Williamson was known as the <laughs> Hammer from his time playing football. He'd go Cowboy. on to be an icon of 70s black exploitation movies, appearing in films like Black, black Caesar, Caesar, Batman Bolt, and Three the Hard Way. Frost goes full Dumb and Dumber dream sequence and rips out Big Emilio's heart. But the move doesn't kill the vampire until yeah. the sex machine turns it into a shish kebab with oh. a number two wooden there stand. We go. Our surviving quartet keeps kicking ass. Don't stop them now, they're <laughs> having such a good time. Enough. Hey, come on. I said don't stop them now. As the remaining dancer vampires Shouldn't square up with the surviving them, adults, we see a wide shot that gives us 24 more background Damn. bodies to count. This excludes like, Frost's table like, topper, since we already counted them earlier. Yep. Mm -hmm. The boys make quick work of their foes with Oof. various headbutts, gunshots, and stakes through the heart. The vampire bodies burn up, and sure, it's weird CG, but at least they leave practical mush on the ground behind. Oof. All that's left is the house band, who Sticky. decide to close their act early. Fuck you, everybody. Good night! And just blow the fuck up. I guess okay, I'll uh, that first. happened. Talk about an explosive finale. When mm -hmm. the dust settles, the only people left standing Two. are Frost, the Sex Machine, Seth, and the Fullers. I'm Oof. assuming no one managed to get through the locked door, so I'll add 24 more victims to round out these 60 total club patrons Fair that enough. we saw in wide shots earlier. We didn't see them kill, but they were in there, and I'm guessing they're now just kind of uh, all over the place. The survivors get a moment to breathe, and Seth gets a moment to mourn his younger brother. I love you. Um... Sure about that? Why? Don't forget though, this is still a vampire movie. <laughs> Oh god! Richie's back, Look out. not for long, so don't worry, okay? After a brief hesitation to put his brother now? on the kill count a second time, we get to see Richie oh, die again when Seth throws a stake into his Adios, chest and gives him heartburn. This movie's effects extravaganza comes courtesy <laughs> of the legendary K&B effects. The whole film hey, actually KB, originated baby. with an idea oh. from co-founder Robert Kurtzman. He wanted a movie that would promote K&B's work, so he wrote a 24-page treatment that was expanded on by Tarantino, who at the time was still an unknown video clerk. Tarantino wrote the script for only 15 
$1,500. In return, k &B did the effects on his first feature, Reservoir Dogs, for free. Kurtzman would struggle to make the film for almost a decade until Pulp Fiction's success got Damn. studios interested in the project. This crew's not in the clear yet, since a legion of vampire oh, bats has descended right. on the titty twister. Even worse, the dead patrons have begun to turn as well. Oh, One mugless go. vamp gets a hold of Kate before she's saved by a deuce sex Ooh. machina. What's your name, Billy? Kate, what's yours? Sex machine. Pleased to meet you, Kate. Me too. Another trucker attacks hey, the group, up. but he's promptly defrosted by a matchbox and Thanks, a whole lot of fire. The gang sets out to stake the dead bar patrons before they have a chance Probably to rise as vampires. Sex machine quickly puts down three without any hesitation, but this level of violence is new for Kate. She only finds a resolution when a jump scare there we go. starts her into action. Bat. Man, I love Juliet Lewis's physical comedy here. Awesome work. Great <laughs> job. Sex machine gets the short end uh -oh. of the stake though, since as he puts down one more vampire attacker, his arm is bitten in the process. He pulls the classic zombie movie Heidi Ho and conceals the bite from the rest of the group. For all the on-screen mayhem, From Dusk Till Dawn was just as chaotic behind the scenes. The movie had a familial crew who had previously worked with Rodriguez or Tarantino or both. At the same time, conditions were often rough, sometimes shooting in 120 degree weather or for long hours without breaks. I think we worked 18 hours today. And I'm still working on my computer, my time cards to make sure that we're getting Five meal penalties plus 50 bucks non-taxable cash. Production did secure health care for everyone, though, which people seemed pretty pumped about. Rodriguez's <laughs> indie filmmaking habits That's of cute. doing everything himself and employing non-union crew members didn't sit well with the labor union IATSE, especially due to the movie's budget of almost $20 million. Yep. IATSE actually posted up outside the set, an old Laurie's warehouse in East LA, to protest the production, forcing Rodriguez's crew to shoot all the interior scenes for the first five weeks. That ended up working in favor for the movie's effects. We couldn't oh. go outside until the strike was over, so we were in there five weeks, so we just kept going, what else can we come up with? <laughs> <laughs> they were coming up with gags and kills on the spot, with Nicotero running back to the workshop to see what they could do. Judging from deleted scenes, nice. they filmed way more than they could oh, fit in the geez. movie, including a Mortal Kombat fatality oh looking God. kill, and one where a guy's decapitated by some thing-like tummy teeth. There's an excellent feature-length documentary about this movie's hey, chaotic tilt, production boogie. by filmmaker Sarah Kelly called Full Tilt Boogie. It's a cool look at the filmmaking process, and features interviews with all sorts oh, of crew members, Heather. from the truck drivers oh, to the craft services guy, from the second second AD to the assistant to Quentin second. Tarantino and George Clooney. I hate going to Taco Bell for him. I highly recommend it if you're <laughs> interested in an in-depth look at what a movie set is like. Everyone re Yeah, that's fair. Though, honestly, if I see someone hiding things, then like, hey, you know, what are you hiding? Show it before I blow your brains out and probably stick you just be on the safe side. Oh. Okay, bye bye. And <laughs> just saying, sometimes better safe than sorry in these cases, you know? Poor sex machine, though. Anyway. Groups to talk vampire killing strategies, which includes fun genre references from genre veterans. All you gotta do is put two sticks together and you gotta cross. Yeah, he's right. Peter Cushing does that all the time. Seth thinks their greatest weapon will be a man of the cloth, so he tries to reactivate Jacob's holiness. Are you a faithless preacher? Or are you a mean motherfucking servant of God? I'm a mean motherfucking servant of God. Mm -hmm. Servant of God. Only Harvey Keitel can make these censored versions sound cooler. Unbeknownst to everyone, Sex Machine is transforming in the background. It's another spot of great physical comedy, this time Shit. coming from Sabine. <laughs> By the time he's Looney Tunesing up Frost's shoulders, <laughs> he's a full-blooded <laughs> bloodsucker, <laughs> fighting both Frost and Jacob. Aw, oh, son of a bitch! Shit. Frost accidentally throws Sex Machine through a window, <laughs> letting the bats inside as he completes his own transformation, oh. which will put Frost's human form on the Bye, Frost. Seth leads Kate and Scott to a back Shoot. room, Come on. and one vampire narrowly <laughs> gets to them before he blows its head off. Jacob takes refuge under the bar where he finds a baseball bat and a boomstick. He fashions them into an impromptu cross and starts a religion Reggie from Phantasm would be eager to join. He deploys the holy firepower against the unholy horde, which looks a little funky since they didn't have enough monster performers for the scene. They had to shoot the same dozen or so against blue screens and cop them all together in post. In any case, the heaven fire works against them, so I'll count the two vampires he shoots down as he makes his way to the back room. Jacob reunites with his kid, 
legs, but that bite on his arm means he's already dead. The group decides they'll make a last stand together before Jacob turns. And luckily, these vamps have been feasting on shady truckers and biker gangs for years. That gives us this genius plot device of a storage room chock full of contraband. They find all <laughs> sorts of things during a kick-ass montage. Their Van Helsing arsenal includes a holy water super soaker and a jackhammer turned pneumatic staker. And sure, Kate, you can take a crossbow. Whatever kills these vampires before Fire we get more crossbow. silly shots like this one of them slowly walking down the hallway, looking like the cave dwellers from the descent here. Before they leave, Jacob makes his kids promise to kill him when he turns, even threatening to do it himself right now if they don't. God damn, God man! In an earlier draft of the script, Jacob gave a speech that was eventually retooled into the Ezekiel monologue from Pulp Fiction. With the children sufficiently traumatized, the group wades into the vampire suit. In the ensuing brawl, the humans score 13 Battle. kills using crossbows, cross guns, a jackhammer heart jacker, and a couple of holy water hand grenades. <laughs> Seth is attacked by a mean lean sex machine, but manages to steal his whip, using it to decapitate Shit. the bad biker. This machine must run on Energizer though, because it keeps going. Kate finishes him off with a crossbow. Oh, wait a minute. No, she doesn't. There's still another stage to this mini boss fight. The sex machine's body pulls apart to reveal a nasty looking rat man. It almost takes a bite out of Seth, but he kicks it into a nearby Woo! fire, finally decommissioning sex machine. But I ain't putting this last version of him on the count, since it was more rodent than humanoid. That nasty master split is actually a $40,000 puppet with a remote-controlled really? head and cable-controlled limbs. Cool. I can't believe they really set it on fire for the death scene. Jacob fights with a fanged frost, stabbing his shotgun <laughs> straight through him and shooting three vampires straight through him. Damn. Hell yeah! Jacob gets ready to finish Frost off, but he melts away on his own eh? in the face of such badassery. Really? Sometimes you've just got to impress your folks. Scary? <laughs> Jacob gets ready to do more damage, but suddenly the vampires stop attacking him. That's because Jacob's flip flap to the bad side, Shit. putting an end to his human life. Scott notices, Scott. but hesitates to shoot his father, allowing Jacob to take a bite out of his son. God, man, oh, damn it! Scott hits Jacob with holy water. A little late, but it gets him nice and gnarly. I mean, dude's missing half his face now. Then Scott says a prayer. I swear to God in Jesus Christ's name. And blows his father away. Yep, bye -bye. Scott's not sticking around for long after his dad goes, since a gaggle of vampires start tucking into him. He begs for Kate to put him out of his Do misery, it. and his sister dutifully complies, shooting her brother and triggering a holy hell of an explosion Pretty that much. also takes Goodbye. a bunch of vampires onto the count with it. There's not much time to mourn since oh, Kate and up. Seth are running low on ammo yet. and family members. Shh. Things are looking pretty dire until Seth notices the monsters trying to Mission Impossible their way past beams of sunlight. Kate starts shooting a bunch of holes in the walls since they've finally gone from dusk to dawn. They're aided by the arrival of some off-screen reinforcements, the shady customers who were meant to meet Seth and Richie in the first place. When the incoming sunlight up, hits a disco up. ball, the remaining vampires are blown apart in a series of fiery explosions. Seth and Kate narrowly Ooh. escape the destruction Holy. in a stunt that was the first thing they filmed with the titty twister facade. Really? Production designer Cecilia Montiel like, headed the team first? that built this thing out in Barstow amidst You'd extreme think they temperature. The it took them a while to do it, and then it immediately caught fire with the first thing they filmed. No, we weren't supposed to burn the facade now. <laughs> <laughs> I had to rebuild part of it and lean into the now scorched look. We just didn't think there'd be this much fire. Oh man, it must Whoopsie. have been so frustrating to see them titties on fire like that. Outside, <laughs> Seth punches their savior in the face. Wait. Carlos was his criminal contact at the El Rey and the man who sent him to the titty twister in the first place. You've never been here before. No! Carlos is played by Cheech Marin, showing yeah, up on game, again? although this Man, third role enough. wasn't actually meant for it. Carlos oh. was originally played by Chip's actor Eric Estrada, but when That's he dropped enough. out, Rodriguez just put Cheech in again. Fair Seth enough. is downright pissed about the night's events, so Carlos makes it up to him with the currency of the criminal, which is just currency. Seth gives Kate some cash, and she offers to tag along with him to the El Rey, but we all know that's a bad idea. Maybe a bastard, but I'm not a fucking bastard. Kate is left to drive home in her family's RV, and the movie ends with a wide shot that reveals the titty twist. Oh, it's the Aztec top floor temple. of an ancient Aztec ruin. Talk about a titty twist. How many people were left with fangovers at Mexico's baddiest bar? Let's, Let's find, find out. And get to the numbers. numbers. Oh. Oh. Oops. Uh, fuck you very much. Hey. <laughs> Not sure that's a good save, but eh, to throw. I counted a whopping 145 kills in From Dusk Till Dawn. The victims consisted of one female human, 69 male humans, nice, 21 female vampires, 17 male vampires, and 37 Nosferatu looking vampires of indeterminate gender. That gives us this batshit five wedge pie chart. A five chart! And with a runtime of 108 minutes, that left us with a kill on average every 44.69 seconds. I'll give the golden chainsaw for coolest kilt and chat pussy. I freaking love the effect that 
melting and oozing all over the place. <laughs> there are a lot of big gross kills in this movie, but none yeah, funny are sweet ones. as pussies. Don't machete for lame as kill will honestly go to Richie. Dude's the biggest piece of shit in the movie, and he gets got from a single neck bite. And that's it. From Dust yeah, Till fair. Dawn was released in 1996 to mixed reviews and a disappointing box office run. It's since gained cult status and was followed by both a sequel and a prequel, as well as a TV series. Probably Ooh. shouldn't hold your breath for me to cover them, but yeah. until next time, I'm James A. Janice. You know, spin the kill cow. Thanks a lot for watching this kill. Oh, there we go. From dust to dawn. The craziest vampire film yet. So, uh, what do you guys think? <laughs> I gotta say, that was a hell of a ride. <laughs> what do you guys think? Anyway, hope you enjoyed. Until next time, adios.